Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you insertion sort. I'm going to start off by giving an example using cards of all things. I'll just give you a feel for how the algorithm works and then once we've gone through that example we'll write some code. Right? So let's get started. Basically with insertion sort it's a little like selection sort. If you're familiar with that algorithm then this algorithm should come pretty easily. If not, don't worry about it. We're not assuming that you know, you know anything about any algorithms for this video. Okay, essentially the way this thing works is that there's two loops. Okay, there's an outer loop that's responsible for traversing our set of values, or our cards in this case, one at a time, right? From left to right, we're gonna go through each card. Okay, stopping short of the, of the, of the last card, as you'll see why in a second. And then there's an inner loop that's gonna be responsible for um, shifting values around. Okay, basically we're going to grab a card, figure out where it should go within the array, and then make room for it. Okay, so here's how it basically works. The outer loop we're going to keep track of with this face down card, right? So we can keep track of where it's currently sitting at, right? So, you know, this outer loop, for loop, right? Int i equals zero, i less than, you know, s minus one if the array is size is s. Um, I plus plus, right? So this is our I. And then our J, for each iteration of this outer loop, it's going to be initialized to I plus one, right? So we're always going to be looking to the right of wherever the outer loop currently is. And then um, with the inner loop, we're going to be looking back and shifting to make room um, as we go, okay? So let's just go through it. I think it'd be the best thing to do. It'll be the most straightforward thing. Okay, so here we have our set. Outer loop's initialized here, so what we do is we start with the inner loop, which is initialized to i plus one, right? And so we take that value that's currently there in that element, in that location, copy it to a temp variable, okay? And then the inner loop's gonna say, while this temp variable, this value inside the temp variable, so long as that is less than the value to the left of it, we're gonna shift elements, okay? But anyway, so right now, Ace, greater than 10, not less than. So inner loop got nothing to do. That's the end of one outer loop iteration, right? So the outer loop iterates, okay? And then the inner loop, the inner loop gets initialized to this. We copy this five to a temporary location, right? And then we're going to look to the left, right? And this loop is gonna make room for where this card should go. Obviously, I mean, we can look at this and see that it's gonna have to go over here, right? But we're going to need to shift these cards over to make room for five at this location, right? So our inner loop is what's shifting the cards, okay? So is five less than the ace? Yeah, right? So then the inner loop will cause the ace to shift over, okay? That's one iteration of the inner loop, right? Then next iteration is five less than the 10. Well, yeah, then the 10 shifts over, okay? End of inner loop iteration. There's nowhere to go to the left. Right? There's nothing further left in the beginning of the, the set, the beginning of the array, so we've located our insertion point, if you will. So we'll copy the value five right there. Okay, end of outer loop iteration. All right, so the next iteration of the outer loop, we move to here. Okay, and then the inner loop grabs the seven, copies that to the temp, right? And then we look to the left. Is seven less than the ace? Yep, so the ace gets shifted over. Is seven less than the 10? Yep. The 10 gets shifted over. Is seven less than the five? Nope. So we found our insertion point, we're done looking. Okay. End of inner loop, outer loop iterates. Ace is copied to a temporary variable. Is it less than 10? Nope. Inner loop done. All right, outer loop iterates. Four gets copied to a temp variable. Is four less than the ace? Yep. So the ace shifts over. Is four less than the 10? Yep. 10 shifts over. Is four less than seven? Yep. Seven shifts over. Four less than five, yep. Five shifts over. There's nothing to the left of where five was, so we found our insertion point. End of outer loop iteration. Inner loop advances. Three is copied to a temp variable. Is three less than the ace? Yep. Move the ace over. Is three less than the 10? Mm-hmm. Move that over. Is three less than the seven? Yep. Move that over. Is three less than the five? Uh-huh. Move that over. Is three less than the four? Rip. Move that over. Found our insertion point, okay? And 
loop is done, right? Nowhere else to go. There's nothing to the right of the ace. Everything's sorted. We're finished, right? So basically, we got two loops, nested loop, outer loop traverses the entire array one time. Inner loop is responsible for making room for the insertion point, okay? So let's go ahead and look at some code. Okay, so what I have here is a quick little program. I filled out most of it. I got an init function here, and this function is basically gonna take this array of 10 elements and randomly generate some numbers to fill it with, right? And then I have this print function here that's gonna display the contents of the array. Insertion sort is going to be our function that's gonna be responsible for implementing the algorithm, and then we'll call print one more time just to prove that everything works. Okay, so let me just comment out these things real quick and run this, and you'll see you know, the numbers that we have right now, right? So here we got 42, 68, 35, 170, blah, 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 right? So out of order, we need a sorting algorithm. Insertion sort's gonna be our answer. So there's gonna be our solution for this problem. So let us write the insertion sort function. Right, so we're gonna have two loops and we're gonna have a temporary variable, okay? So let us create, we're sorting an array of integers, so I'll make um, a temporary variable that's an integer, call it temp. Okay, and then I'm gonna need two counters, one for each loop, we'll call them i and j, okay? And then our outer loop, we're gonna know exactly how many iterations it's gonna have, so perfect candidate is a for loop. So let's initialize i equal to zero, because we're gonna start off at that left card, that leftmost card, right? And then so long as i is less than s minus one, right? We can't go all the way to the end of the array because if we did, then the inner loop would be initialized with a value that was past the end of the array, right? And then we'd start comparison and totally screw everything up. So we have to stop one element short of the end of the array, right? We don't want to have an off by one error. Okay, so there's our outer loop. Okay, we'll make this a little bit bigger here. Okay, and now we need an inner loop, right? But before we do that, remember, we initialize the inner loop with i plus one. This is so that we are going to begin our examination or begin the cycling of our inner loop by looking at the card that's one position to the right of, um, of the outer loop, you know, where the, outer, the card that the outer loop is currently pointing at. Okay, so we got that. And then we got to copy that card, right? Put that card in the temporary memory location. Okay, so AFJ will do that. Okay, oops. And now it's time for the, the, the inner loop to do its business. Now remember what the inner loop's doing is it's gonna keep looking to the left of wherever it's currently pointing at. And if that value is less than the value we put in temp, right? That card that we lifted to the top, then we need to make some room, okay? So while temp is less than the card to the left, which is a of j minus one, okay? While that's true, then we're gonna do some stuff, okay? But remember, we stopped shifting, we stopped looking to the left when we got to you know the far left or, or one position away from the far left, right? There was, there was nowhere else to look, right? Once we got to the beginning of the array, so we gotta build that in here too. So we'll do that by saying while j is greater than zero, okay? So while there's something to look to the left for, and so long as our temporary value is less than what's to the left of it, then we're gonna do some stuff, right? What we're gonna do is, is we're gonna shift, right? So let us, shift to the right, okay? Let's grab that card from the left and then move it to the position uh, that we're currently at, okay? And then when we do that, let's move on to the left. Let's move closer to the beginning of the array, okay? So once this while loop here is finished shifting elements to the right, okay, once that finishes its business, then it's time to put the card, put the card in its correct position, okay? So how we do that, we just say a of j 
is equal to temp, right? This is the part where we took the card from you know above the array and then put it into that now vacant spot, okay? So that should be everything. We'll see if, um, let me stop moving this. <laughs> so that way you can get a glance at the code. That should be everything, but hey, let's test it. I might have made a mistake somewhere, so you, know, you can never be 100% sure until you actually test it. So go back up here, uncomment out my insertion sort function call and the print function. Okay, so now this will show us the before. We're going to do the sorting and then the after. Okay, so let's see if I made any mistakes. Okay. Wow, cool, no mistakes. It made, did it all right the first time, crazy, right? So here's the original array, at the 10 elements, then insertion sort ran, and then here's our print with the updated array, 1, 25, 35, 42, 9, 6, 3, blah, blah, blah. Okay, all right, so hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Um, as usual, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to shoot me an email, stop by my office hours. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.